Welcome to UCLA Newsweek. In this edition, a groundbreaking hand transplant. Also, the newest Anderson forecast, HIV in mothers, nano Velcro, and protein-based fuels. For the first time in the Western United States, surgeons at the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center performed a hand transplant operation. The 14 and a half hour marathon surgery that attached tendons, blood vessels, and nerves to the patient's arm began one minute before midnight, Friday, March 4th, and was completed Saturday, March 5th. The effort was to graft the donor hand to a 26-year-old mother from Northern California who lost her right hand in a traffic accident nearly five years ago. The complex procedure was carried out by a team of 17 surgeons, anesthesiologists, operating room nurses, and technicians at UCLA, one of only four centers nationwide to offer the surgery. The procedure was only the 13th in the history of the country. And now, a look at more developments at UCLA. In its first quarterly report of 2011, the UCLA Anderson forecast is cautiously optimistic as real GDP grows steadily and employment continues to increase. Government investment incentives are part of the picture, but investment is also being spurred by advances in wireless and cloud computing, among others. California remains sluggish, though, and its growth will be slower than expected in 2011. 100 to 200 infants are born with HIV each year, many to women who either were not tested in early pregnancy or who didn't receive treatment. A National Institute of Health study has found that adding one or two drugs to the standard treatment can reduce by 50% or more the chances that an infant will develop an HIV infection from its mother. Researchers have developed a nanotech device that easily collects circulating tumor cells, reducing the need for invasive biopsies. Like Velcro, the device uses tiny structures on a silicon chip to snag tumor cells from the blood of cancer patients. The research at the California Nanosystems Institute promises to improve both diagnosis and treatment of cancer by allowing doctors to study the spread of malignant cells through the body. Biofuel currently comes from two types of raw materials, carbohydrates and lipids, or fats. For the first time, it's feasible to make biofuel from one of the most abundant biomolecules on Earth, proteins. In order to use non-food protein as a carbon source, researchers rewired the metabolism of a microorganism. The next step, investigate whether the discovery works on a larger scale. For more on these and other stories, please visit newsroom.ucla.edu and follow us on Twitter at UCLA Broadcast.